has everybody been seeing the little video going around where some guy's got a big old giant smile in the caption says something like take care of your teeth because the first thing everybody noticed is your pretty shiny teeth anyhow the guy is myth missing a tooth and uh it's kind of the first thing you look at you're looking at their mouth their smile and stuff and uh then it says you didn't even notice the guy was missing a eyebrow and when you looked up it was gone so you know the neat thing is there the way i look at it if we get a flaw or something wrong with us that we don't want people to notice just take a pair of pliers rip your tooth out you won't have to worry about it anymore <laughs> So over this past year here on Corn Star Farms, we've been really scratching our heads a lot and we've been trying to figure out how we can get our crop in in a more timely manner, how we can do things more efficiently in the springtime, not running around with our heads cut off so much. Basically, we've been trying to find ways we can increase our bottom line here on the farm. This past spring was a record wet spring and it drug our planting season on for over seven weeks. Meaning we started planting and we would plant for two days and get kicked out of the field for two weeks, then come back, plant for a day, get kicked out for another five days, plant for a day, get kicked out for another five days. The cycle repeated for seven weeks. It took us a very long time to get done planting. With the way corn and beans work, if you get them planted in a timely manner, generally speaking, you're gonna have better yields. This year for us, our early planted corn was 40 to 60 bushels better than our late planting corn. So I got to thinking, maybe we should get a bigger planter. So I ran the idea across to dad and he agreed. Seeing as roughly half of our corn acres this year were planted on time and half were late, half of our corn acres equates to 600 acres. If you take 600 acres at 50 bushels an acre times the current price of corn, we'll use $3.50 right now, that's over $100,000. So to me, that seems like a no brainer because if we have a few years like that, we could easily justify a bigger planter. But the only issue is our operation we don't have a tractor big enough to pull a 24 row planter. We have a 16 row planter right now and the next size up is a 24. So that means if we get a bigger planter, we're also gonna have to get a bigger tractor. So after doing a bunch of number crunching and running different scenarios and convincing dad that a 24 row planter would be great for our operation, he agreed to it. So now we're gonna be looking for a 24 row planter and we're also gonna to have to be looking for a bigger tractor to pull the 24 row planter. We have a lot of decisions to make right now. We need to figure out what model planter we want, what goodies we wanna have on the planter, and then we need to find a tractor. So we need to figure out what size tractor we want, what brand tractor we want, if we wanna buy it at an auction, if we wanna buy it at a dealer, if we wanna buy it at a private sale. We got a lot of different variables we need to figure out there. We need to figure out how much money we're gonna be able to pay for this stuff. So these next few weeks here we're really gonna have our nose pressed hard against the grindstone to find a tractor we're gonna be scoping out all sorts of auctions dealers we're gonna be looking through the internet all the time magazines there's got to be a good deal out there somewhere so we're gonna find it all right the search begins oh boy guys we're on an adventure hey we are heading to an auction. It's a retirement farm auction so we're gonna go and see how machinery is selling and uh, couple pieces of equipment we'd kind of like to just see how we're buying a new beller we're we're on our trip there now but it's a beautiful day calm sunny no wind Thank you. That's me. hey bud well 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 what are we looking for So we're at an auction today. There is a big tractor here and a 24 row planter, but after looking at them, there are things that we're not interested in. I'll show you guys some of the things we kind of look at when we're looking at stuff to evaluate whether we want it or not. Let's look at the planter first. This planter sat out all its life. So chains and stuff are stiff. Uh, disc opener, some of them are going bad. Our main concern is just the weather and stuff, how it's taking its toll. Hoses are getting stiff. They're gonna start cracking out. Tire wear, I don't know. We were just weren't impressed with what we've seen on the pictures. Advertised it as hydraulic down pressure. It's air down pressure. So 
we're gonna watch it sell, but we're not interested in it. Evaluating a piece of equipment, you just kind of look at the small things on things. We'll take these for example. It's, it's missing some rubber here. We got a seal or some sort of leak right there. We got a broken light right here. But look at these airbags, and they're super cracked out on the back side. This one's actually deflated here, and that's what they're supposed to look like. Which I don't know if this just got pushed up or what. I'm not really familiar enough with the system to know how they're supposed to look at rest, but I don't like the cracks. You look at tires, I mean they're cracking out pretty good just from sitting in the sun you see how that paints a little darker than this the fading is a really obvious sign that it sat out a lot especially for only being five years old like this stuff just doesn't happen overnight the weather is like the worst thing for equipment like this it just wears on rubber components so quick hoses wires electrical as rain gets in everything it, it can just make a big headache this planter is a 2014 so it should be in really good condition but we're seeing a lot of things that are kind of pointing otherwise for the right price it might make a good planter for someone but what we're looking to buy we're not interested in it this is why it's really nice to be able to see stuff in person because looking online at the pictures this planter looked great if we would have bought this thing sight unseen and then got it, we would have been a little disappointed. Very disappointed. You can take one planer that is just a bare basic stock model and then one that's totally decked out with a bunch of technology and you're gonna have a drastically different price. This one has a little bit of technology on it. It has row shot offs, has air down pressure. It's definitely not gonna bring what just a base model would do, but it's hard to say what it's gonna do. Now, if this planer had row shot offs on every row, you're gonna be looking at at least $100 a row extra value. I'm pretty sure row shut offs per row are around $300. And then if it had hydraulic like downforce meaning hydraulics are going to be pushing a row down and that's going to constantly adjust as you go across the field that runs about a thousand dollars a row new at least for an ag leader system i don't know what other companies are like but things like that can definitely add to the value of the planner those are all things we're looking at when we're looking at different planners what kind of tech it has on it what it doesn't does the price reflect the tech that it has on it we'd really like to have hydraulic down pressure we'd really like to have row shutoffs and then everything else on top of that is just kind of some extra goodies this is the tractor we were interested in it's a 2012 massey Ferguson 8690. It's a 340 horsepower tractor with the CVT transmission. Let's look at some of the things I noticed right away. So just walking up to it, I can tell these tires are about shot. Definitely done a lot of travel on the highway. When you're angled on the road, one side wears out faster. The insides are a little less than half, but these outsides are kind of getting to the end of their life. This tractor has also sat out a lot. We can see the plastics on the top are fading pretty hard. The back of the tractor doesn't really look too bad here at first glance. This right here on the three points bent, I don't know what was on there, but I mean that's a thick piece of metal that generally doesn't just bend. We got some rust and stuff starting back here. Got tires on this side that are bad. This one's also shot. Our tires are definitely not cheap. I don't know the exact price on these tires, but on those back ones, you're probably looking close to $2,000 a tire. And on these fronts, I would say at least a thousand. I definitely say you'd want to replace at least four of them on the tractor. So right there, we're probably looking at close to six thousand dollars. Let's climb up into the cab here. Cab definitely smells like new. We'll give it that. First thing I notice when we look out is the hood. We got a ton of sun fading. That paint is basically gone right there. That's not something you can wax out. The cab is really clean. I, I don't see anything broken. I noticed the headliner is a little dirty, but that happens. The seat doesn't have any tears or anything. It's not all stained up. So the person in the cab was being pretty clean. This tractor's also got only 2,700 hours on it. So not really a whole lot of hours but just looking at the general condition of the tractor for the year and the hours we shouldn't be running into these issues now i get it some people have to run on the highway a lot with the tire use totally normal but it's just unfortunate the tractor had to sit out so much it's not that i'm trying to bash the tractor or anything i'm just trying to show you guys some things we're looking at when we're buying a tractor we want to buy something really nice that's going to last us for a long time and we want to get our money's worth if we ran a tractor and it eventually got to this point that's fine we know we were the ones who got it at that point and we know what it is but Walking into a new situation, buying one, not something I really want to add to our operation. We're looking in here, we can see the hours that the oil was changed on. Looks like 2,475. The tractor's just got about 2,700 hours on it. So we're not terribly out of line for an oil change. We like to change ours every 150 hours or so, but some people go a little longer and that's okay. It's not way overdue for an oil change. And all in all, it could be a really nice tractor. I mean, the price should definitely reflect with the tires and such and just the overall condition of the tractor. Like I said, it's not a bad tractor, just not something we're looking for. Another thing we also do when we go to an auction or when you're buying something from someone in general, look at all the other equipment that they have. Generally how they treat all their other stuff is exactly how they treated what you're looking at. We got this Challenger tractor beside it here. Not a very old tractor. Same thing, a lot of sun fading, 
we got some general rust and stuff going which it happens well, we got this going down here I'm, I'm not really liking that it's kind of a sign that this has been an issue for a while and hasn't been taken care of there's supposed to be like a heat guard cover thing right here and this owner obviously has to have seen this and just leaving it like that leads me to believe that when kind of minor stuff went on it just kind of got left and we also got the exhaust here rusted out it definitely sat out a lot rain came in there filled that up and then it eventually just rusted through same thing with the tire situation on this one and all the equipment here it really just has a lot of sun fading on it and we can look around at the farmyard there's not a lot of buildings to put stuff inside in so he really didn't have much of a choice to leave it out i know in our operation we don't have room to get everything in all the time so stuff does have to sit out it's not something that we like to do but something that we have to do so i'm sure this guy had basically the same situation it's not that i'm trying to knock his stuff it's just like I said, when we're wanting to buy something newer and spend a good chunk of money on it, we'd like to buy something really, really nice. Same thing with the tractor. If we would have bought that online, sight unseen, the pictures looked really, really good. But then getting here, it's a whole different tractor. I've heard a lot of people having really good luck buying stuff online, sight unseen, just looking at pictures. And I've also heard of some bad luck. So you got to be careful when you're buying stuff online. If you can go look at it in person, that's the best thing to do. Well, we had some optimism coming into this auction, but after seeing all the stuff here, there's nothing we're interested in. But we're going to hang around to see what some stuff brings, just for snoopiness. If we know of something uh, that's an issue, we will try and point that out. But it's your responsibility to inspect the merchandise before you buy it. That is impressive how fast he can talk. You gotta be careful on auction. You don't just want to stick your hand up randomly when they're bidding because otherwise you might be buying something you didn't intend to buy. Don't ask how I know that. Give me seven pot. 50, 77, 08, 80, with a good with a good round the ring. Are we done? 77, 78,000. Sold the planter. $77,000. Where are we going? One owner track. There we go. And I'm asking 100, but where are we going to be? And 30. Give me five. And 30, minute and five, and I'm going to 40. And 40, minute and I'm five. And 45,000, 45, 50. And 50, minute and 50, minute and 50, minute and 45, minute and I'm 50. 89, minute and I'm 90,000, another four, 90, minute and I'm 89, minute and I'm 90. Are we done? Sold it. $89,000, 89, where are we going? Well, surprise, surprise, guys. We didn't buy the planner, we didn't buy the tractor, but we did go look at a 24 row white center fill planner the other day, and it was super, super clean. So we're gonna run up to that dealer quick to check and see if they still have it, and we're gonna discuss some prices with the dealer there, and maybe see if we can get a deal worked out. This is a planner, Cooper. Let's see. Well, hold on. Got something in my quick. Ah, ah. Mosquito. This morning, Cole, Cooper, and me, we jumped in the vehicle. We ran over to a farm auction, a retirement sale. There was a planner we were very interested in looking at the sale bill. You would have swore the planner almost looked like new. They had a tractor we were very interested in too. The sale bill picture looked beautiful. So remember guys, when you're out there looking at stuff, sometimes you may want to go look at it with your own eyes versus pictures. We found out when we got there, as soon as we walked up to the items for our eyes, we were very disappointed. It wasn't something we wanted to bring home, but uh, the next guy that bought it, it, it may make a beautiful thing for him, but it wasn't what we were looking for. But anyhow, we left the sale. We ended up going to a dealer that we looked at a really nice 24 row planner a couple weeks ago. We really liked the looks of that planner. It was a one owner planner. So we went back and we did some dealing with the guy. We felt like we were treated really good. We ended up buying another planner from a dealer today. We put about 300 miles on the vehicle and we're back home now. So that was kind of the run through that we did today. All right, everybody. I'm gonna show you something really, really cool. This is our new used tractor. 
It's a Case Magnum 340. I think she's got around 950 hours on it. 340 horse. This came from a farm auction. We know the guy very well. This tractor is, well, it looks brand new inside now. And you got Cole the Corn Star getting ready to do a fundraiser where he's going to be out picking up a lot of pop cans. <laughs> And you gotta have Cole the corn star in there playing with the horn. He was one of them kids when he was little. You could give him a box and he was happy. Gonna see if he had anything to say when he gets out. What do you think, Cole? I like it. All right. I know nothing about this tractor, guys. Leather seats, buddy seat. Like I said, this tractor smells and looks brand spanking new. I don't know what's all on here, guys. The boys will have to give you more of a tour of it later, but we just brought her home. We're gonna bring her in the heated shop, wax it up. I'm uh, not wax it up, it's already shining, but we wanna wash it to get the snow off of it. Okay, there you guys go. I'll let the boys tell you more about it. Oh, throttle. Right now, I'm washing up with some equipment. We have the skid loader over here. We need to pull the tracks off. We actually take the tracks off. We've got to check the gearbox oil, the rear end oil, and that is down in there deep. So you got to take off the tracks, washing that up. We're going to wash the engine compartment out and stuff. We need to change the oil on the skid loader, all that good stuff, all the filters, fuel filters, air filter, any filter that thing has, we need to get that changed. We also have the 7140 case I in here we're gonna give it another bath we did it a little bit after harvest but you almost need to do it two or three times to get them good and clean so I'm gonna give it another bath then we're gonna service it up get ready to change oils filters kind of the whole nine yards in this little gal too and we need to wax it so talking cold for the next few days get her clean tonight she can dry then I get her washed waxed We'll be ready to go. And you know what? I don't know if you can see this or not. I have the hose for the power washer all over the place. I got mud all over my face. <sighs> okay, let's get things started. You guys wanna see something cool? Oh my. Right now, I'm just trying to get everything wet on this thing. We soak it real good. The dirt and stuff let soak. Working on the skid loader too if you're gonna kill two stones and one bird. Look at that horse. <laughs> oh man. My lens is a little foggy. Huh? It's foggy guys. This is what happens when you power wash inside for like three hours and you don't have the dehumidifier on. It gets foggy. I'm just getting ready to do some waxing on our 7140. Haven't waxed it since uh, beginning of harvest, so I'd like to get that done. But I was just looking. We must have Mama Case IH tractor here. And then we move over here and we got Papa Case magnum it's just unreal the difference in the size this is the 340 and then we wander back over here to the 7140 the 7140 has approximately 200 horse and then the case ih magnum here has 340 horse a little more traction this one here is front wheel cyst meaning the front wheels will claw along with the back ones. Little mama over here, she's just two wheel drive. She only pulls off the back wheels. They both have some pretty good purposes and uh, both very, very nice tractors. This right here is a 2014 Case IH Magnum 340. We got duels all the way around. This thing is sweet. I'm sorry guys, you didn't get to see the auction when we bought this. It was really cold at the auction and my hands were icicles and I didn't want to have my camera out because it was also snowing and I didn't want it to get all wet. So I'm just making a bunch of excuses. But yeah, that's why I didn't record us buying this tractor. But don't worry, I'd say we got a very fair price on this tractor, especially since this tractor only has a thousand hours on it. This tractor was a lot of money, but I'd say we got a better deal on it. If you look one up right now in a magazine or at a dealer, we got a good deal compared to what 
you'd see there, especially for the hours. We're happy with what we paid for it. It's gonna make us a really nice tractor and we're excited to use it. When I was little, we bought the 7140 and when I was a little bit older, we bought the John Deere 4840. But this is the first tractor that I've bought myself and it's a heck of a machine. This is a pretty cool difference in the years right here. We got a 1991 Case IH 7140 and we got a 2014 Magnum 340 and then we got a 2001 Case IH 2388 Combine. It's kind of fun to look at the color differences. We got a little bit of a color difference between these two. The plastics on the 7140 are definitely a little bit more faded and then the plastics on the front of the Combine are also a little more faded but the sides they're relatively the same color. We try our best to keep up with waxing everything at least once a year, usually twice a year, and we wash stuff all the time. And then everything we have is usually always inside. We don't let anything sit out, at least not for extended periods of time. So when we look at this tractor in 20 years, it should look basically the same as it does now. We definitely need to clean the floor yet. Today at the auction when we bought it, it was pretty muddy out there. So this is kind of inevitable because several people got in to check it out. We got the leather seats in here. Oh, just look at these things. This one also has a heated seat in it. We got all kinds of little goodies in here with the dials and the buttons and stuff. I'm gonna have to learn all this yet. The cab definitely isn't dirty by any means, but it does need a detailing. It's just a little bit dusty kind of throughout. The guy we bought it from was extremely picky. As you can see, it's still got the plastic on it. This tractor just turned over for 1,000 hours, so it's got a lot of life left in it. Put that into comparison, this tractor here's got 7,700 hours on it, and the combine's just got over 5,000. On this tractor, we'll put about 300 hours a year on it, so it's gonna last us a very, very long time. We're gonna be using this tractor on the new 24-row planner, and we're also gonna be using it on the green cart. We will be keeping these two tractors right here, and then we're gonna be selling the 1981 John Deere 4840. It's not that we don't like the John Deere tractor, but the case here has more gear it's a lot nicer going across the field. This tractor has a little bit more power. This tractor is definitely a little rougher going across the field than the John Deere, but we're gonna get some more weights for the front of this and that should definitely help out a lot. And kind of our plans here is this is gonna be running the 24-row planner and then we're gonna be keeping our other planner and we're gonna be pulling it with this. In our area, we've been seeing really good luck with planting early soybeans. So we're gonna be planting soybeans with this while the other one's planting corn. It's gonna be kind of exciting this year running two different ones. We're gonna be running the Ag Leader monitors in both of these. This one's gonna have an OnTrack 3 auto steer system on it, so it's gonna go right around the steering wheel. Yes, you guys can get an auto steer system for an older tractor without plumbing into the hydraulics or anything. It's actually very affordable. And this one already has it all plumbed in and stuff, so we're just gonna stick our Ag Leader in Command 1200 monitor in there and then put our globe up top, and everything should be all plumbed in and ready to rock and roll. This tractor's got a lot of sweet features on it. One thing that's really cool that we've never had in any of our tractors before is a suspension. This has front suspension, and it also has cab suspension. So on the drive home today, it feels like you're literally riding on a cloud. It is so soft, and this tractor is so quiet. When you're in the cab, if you have the radio on at all, you cannot hear any engine noise whatsoever when you're at full throttle. Like it is, it's quiet. Something that's also new for us on this tractor is DEF. We've never had to put DEF. DEF stands for diesel exhaust fluid. None of our other tractors have it. The combine doesn't have it. The sprayer doesn't have it, but this does. So we got diesel fuel here and then DEF here. I know a lot of people don't like DEF, think it's annoying. We're not gonna be deleting this tractor. We're gonna keep it the way it is. At least for now, we don't really see a point in deleting it. We don't put a billion hours on it a year and it's not that hard for us to put DEF in it. And another thing, if heaven forbid we have any issues with the engine or something down the road, if it's deleted, some places won't work on it, so we don't really want to have to run into that headache. There we have it, guys. We have a sweet new tractor now. We also have a 24 row planner. We got the whole package. We're ready to rock and roll with this thing. It's going to be a really nice combination out in the field. We should be able to plant over 400 acres on a really good day with this planner. And then with our other one, we're going to be able to have at least 200 acre days on really good days. So it shouldn't take us very long to get all of our acres knocked out this year. And that's what we want. We want to be able to get in the field and get out of the field, get all of our crop in and timely manner. By getting stuff in early, not only do we have higher potential for higher yields, we also have crops that are gonna be able to dry down more. When crops can get in at an early stage, then they can get through their whole length of maturity. And then once they hit their maturity and they start dying off, we'll still have some warm days in the fall there where when the wind's blowing and stuff, we'll be able to get our crop dried down. We don't have to put our corn through the grain dryer. That saves us a ton of money, it saves us a ton of time. It's just gonna be a lot more convenient. But with all that stuff being said, guys, this is the 
the end of the video. Be sure to say goodnight to the Magnum 340. Don't forget to say goodnight to the 7142. Okay, I guess the Combine's complaining too. Say goodnight to the Combine, guys. Yes, this is the end of the video. If you liked the video, remember, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, write it down in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. We got a lot more stuff coming with this tractor. We'll see it in action before you know it. I'm excited. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.